Thanks a lot for that. Well, you know, this is actually the launch of this particular bus. This is NETV Facebook uh, and the Global Education Leadership Foundation is launching this bus, which is going to be running all the way through to the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, which is taking place in Hyderabad. The idea really to push entrepreneurship and to push the startup culture. And the man who's going to be flagging this off is actually the person who's been leading the entire Startup India campaign, Amitabh Kant, and more to push it. Amitabh, the idea of taking this bus, you know, 14 days is going to go through six major cities, is to try and get a lot more people uh, interested in the basic idea of, of starting up. Is that something which is starting to find resonance, resonance with the youth? Uh, I think, Vikram, what has happened in the last two years, when we started the startup uh, movement, a lot of our startups were locating abroad. They were going to Singapore, they were going to Silicon Valley. What we're seeing now is that a lot of startups are moving from Silicon Valley into India now because we've been able to create an ecosystem which is probably now the best in the world. And uh, we are trying to take this further on. We're seeing a huge amount of uh, energy, vibrancy and dynamism in this movement. We're seeing startups not merely in the field of e-commerce but in education, health, social innovation. Some very unique things are happening. And we're trying to take this disruption a little further uh, through this Atal Innovation Mission, which has become a huge mass movement, uh, we've launched over about close to 1,000 tinkering labs in school where students get used to uh, robots, 3D printers, etc. And students from class 6 onwards uh, move away to a reality of manufacturing in India, designing, innovating in India. And uh, we're supporting a lot of incubators around in India so that we give a huge impetus to this movement of innovation, innovation for designing in India, innovation for entrepreneurship in India. You know, looking at, looking at the ecosystem, because I think you're absolutely right. The way to get this done is to get an ecosystem going. That's what Silicon Valley did. That's why they were able to function. When you're looking at that ecosystem in India, some things are right. People are getting interested in it. Obviously, you're pushing it a lot. And there's no shortage of bright people in India. Funding now becoming easier. Some people are still concerned about the regulations and the headache about starting up company. What will happen if it doesn't fail? Can we fail? Will we be able to shut down the company? Some of those issues which are more government related might still be there, which I'm sure you're trying to solve. Uh, so two things. There's a huge focus on making India easy and simple to be able to start a business uh, within a day. Uh, so we've done a lot And of close a business in case it doesn't so, work. So, I'll, uh, you know, so one of the biggest things government has actually done is uh, to bring in the bankruptcy and insolvency law so that you can exit. And failure has to be accepted by all of us, including the Indian society and the parents, that failure is a necessary concomitant of success. You have to fail to succeed. And if you fail, you just exit out and have a quick exit and that's what bankruptcy law is all about and uh, you know creating an ecosystem where you can start up very early uh, yeah. start up very quickly so start up early if you fail get out get back again so you fail once you fail twice you fail thrice fourth time you will succeed and you'll make it really big and okay. uh, if you if you want to be a great innovator you necessarily have to fail once or twice and the Indian society and the Indian parents and everyone must accept that failure and we have made it very easy now. So a lot of the people working on this, working with the Global Education Leadership Foundation, are young kids. They're actually driving a lot of, not literally driving the bus, but pushing the entire idea of taking the bus out there. The, that's, again, a part of that entrepreneurship that you're talking about. So young kids coming inside and getting involved with campaigns like this. That's what you seem to be driving. Yeah, well, um, you know, uh, whatever Amitabh said makes a lot of sense. But for it to become real, we need to have a behavioral change and in the attitude of young people and that can only happen if we start working with them at the school level and at the um, early stages of higher education and what does entrepreneurship really mean it means the willingness to take risks the willingness to stick your neck out and yep. as you said as he said just now parents and others have got to learn to accept this to do this we need to encourage and give opportunities to young people and the young people who have worked on this bus, this is precisely the opportunity they have had. They have had their little failures, they have had their little challenges, but see the bus standing here. So they have learned to overcome those challenges, deal with those challenges, and come out successfully. And I'd like to also mention this bus, while it's going through the 
uh, six cities and 4,000 miles and yeah. eight universities. It's also going to allow young people en route to come on and make a pitch of their ideas. And maybe get funded while riding in the bus. No, and hundred of these best are going to be presented to investors and we hope Mr. Kant will help us in we finding hope, We hope many uh, students from IIT. Yeah, in fact, I was just coming to get the IIT director with us also driving this. So, you know, the archetypical person coming to IIT, they're going to come here, they're going to go to IIT and then they're going to become an engineer, you know. Movies like Three Idiots have almost popularized that a lot. Is that what still the students out here are wanting to do? Or are they saying, we're going to come out here to an IIT and become an entrepreneur, start our own company, and work in some of the new technologies that are shaping the world? You know, AI and biotech and what have you. In fact, we have done some surveys, and uh, our understanding is that one in four students in IITs now wants to start a company. I think that that's the kind of... One in four want, want to start a company. Want to start a company. IIT ecosystem actually responsible for one of the largest numbers of startups, which are unicorns. I, I think after Stanford and one or two others, IITs are right up there. In fact, IIT Delhi has produced six uh, unicorn company and uh, the alumni. And I think another thing is being a technology institute, our focus is also, you know, technology entrepreneurship, which will, al which will also mean deep technology startups. And for that, uh, you often require very high-end facilities. We're also creating a kind of a technology park with all these facilities so that people can come and a kind of a residential incubator. They will have access yeah. to all these facilities and, and work on technologies which can become uh, the technology kind of startup. Okay. Now, I have two other gentlemen here who have been very crucial in the Atal, you know, uh, technology mission and areas. I just wanted to ask you, we heard what Amitabh Kant was saying. What to your mind, I'm going to put this to both of you, are some of the key things that those young people who are coming and tinkering with new ideas, when they tell you, you know, this is the problem I am facing, because we have to find the problems, because that's how you'll find the solutions to the problems. Um, what are they looking at you and saying, this is what we need to be done, and we'll be able to tra transform our ideas into successful companies? Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, yeah. So the first thing is, you know, making them uh, realize that there are problems around. So acquainting them with the problems around and getting them to start seeing problems in and around the community, not some esoteric problems which you're talking about, you know, which is abstract. They probably know they are problems. I mean, yeah. just the air that we are breathing <laughs> is a problem right yeah. now. And then what they are doing is we are encouraging them to think of solutions using the technologies around them. And it has been amazing to see some of the children responding to that. For example, a girl in one of the government schools in Karnataka has come up with an IoT device for irrigation management. And if you ask her the background, her father is a farmer, and so she comes up with something which is and very relevant. Internet of Things device for irrigation. I saw yeah. somebody else with a, with a plan in there for converting urine into electricity, which I thought was fascinating. Yeah. See, one of the major uh, outcomes which we want to get out of this Atal Tinkering Labs is that, you know, students get an opportunity to learn outside the textbook. You know, you are, we are taking them outside the existing curriculum. I mean, giving wings to their imagination and, you know, their in internal potential to bloom. Yeah. And second part is that, you know, they will try to identify the problems which they are facing around them and, you know, come back and try to formulate the problem okay. and come with the solutions. Right. Last question, you, Amitabh. We, we've often heard the government and others saying that startups and entrepreneurship is going to be the answer to the jobs crisis. There is a jobs crisis. It's going to get worse as technology and artificial intelligence and others really gets going. Could this solve the problem or no? Uh, firstly, Vikram, we must embrace technology with all our might. Secondly, uh, the more technology you embrace, you'll move on uh, up the scale. So you'll have higher skilled, uh, higher kind of, uh, higher paid jobs. Secondly, we must ensure that India brings in a lot of disruption. And disruption is the way forward. We must technologically leapfrog in many, many areas. And that's the only way we can catch up, make a quantum jump in uh, health, education, social innovation, and a vast range of areas. All right. So be be disruptive. Can I can I now going to get both of you to flag off the flag off the bus, which is going to have a long, long journey. Why don't you? Come. Okay. Yeah, you want to come here? And
Congrats to that bus. That bus now starting to head off as soon as it finds a path through the crowd out here. It's going to be going, traveling for 14 days, many, many states, many, many universities, trying to get the best and the brightest ideas to get, uh, and brightest minds to get all excited about the idea of startups and innovation. Uh, I'm going to leave you with a very quick break at this point. Let the bus start its journey. It's going to culminate in Hyderabad at that Global Entrepreneurship Summit that you're already hearing a lot about. Back to you now. We're going to take a quick break and then return to the studio for the rest of the news.